as a uh, professional in whatever field you choose to work in, um, you know, especially if you're not going to choose to work in the golf industry. So a little bit of my background. Um, as a high school, uh, let's say as a junior golfer, I did have a very successful junior golf career. Uh, before uh, my junior year of high school, ended up playing, in, uh, actually going into the round of 16 in the U.S. Junior and the Western Junior, uh, having played, uh, finished top 10 in the state championships, and had a very, um, a very good ranking, both in the junior rankings as well as also in the amateur rankings in the New York area. The thing is, is that I never really wanted to play professional golf. That wasn't something I wanted to do. And that's why I'm here also to say that, you know, many of you may want to have a career in professional golf, but it's okay if professional golf is not something that you're interested in doing, but you like playing golf and you like competing and you'd like to, you know, you'd like to know how, okay, how can I manage my, you know, my golf and my academics so that I can leverage golf to get into college and then later on, how can I manage playing golf while trying to manage a, a professional career. And so that's what I'm here for. Um, so I guess I'll start off uh, sort of you know, going, you know, going to a question and asking, and actually, uh, so I'm not so smart, so sometimes I have to write things down and uh, kind of jog my memory a little bit. So the question I have is, um, and the reason why I ask this question is uh, a lot of you who want to uh, play college golf and possibly even get a college golf scholarship. Uh, one thing that I'd recommend at this point, and uh, I believe Claire will be talking about this, is that you need to be thinking nationally. You need to be thinking as high as possible because the, the, the way the coaches will look at you know, prospective college athletes is how can this student athlete help my team? And the reality is, is that most college golf programs, the student athletes, um, you know, they played at a national level. They played at a national level in high school. They played at a very high level. And so when you're looking at your schedule, let's say for next spring, next summer, you should be looking at how do I compare myself against other college recruits, high school recruits. And also for the amateur events, you're playing against student athletes who are already members of college golf teams. And so coaches can get a direct comparison of how you play versus their top recruits as well as also their current college golfers. So the question I have for you is, and uh, you know, whoever can you know, raise your hand, and, and uh, so can someone name me either the venue for the U.S. Boys Junior or the U.S. Girls Junior in 2017? Anybody? Okay, so let me uh, segue to the next question. Can someone tell me what the venue was, the national venue for the U.S. Boys Junior, the U.S. Girls Junior, this past year, 2016. Chris? <laughs> so the girls was at Ridgewood Country Club uh, in Paramus, New Jersey. And the boys was the honors course in Chattanooga. Okay, so the reason why I ask that question is when you're thinking about your schedule, and I'm sure Claire will talk about this soon, is Think, try to think about that next step. Try to, try to think about how you can make yourself known on a national level to try to get that ranking up because I think that will be very important for you in terms of trying to get, um, trying to be in the top of a coach's list when you're trying to apply for that program. So the next step I want to take is to uh, talk to you about, okay, what does, okay, how does golf and how does being a student athlete fit in when you're in school. Uh, having played college golf at Columbia, having coached there, I've seen a lot of student athletes come in and uh, you know, have varied experiences um, in terms of how successful they were at, during, their, during their years at, uh, at Columbia. And I've also seen other student athletes as well in other schools um, try to balance their, their, you know, their studies and their golf. So the most important thing is the uh, schedule balancing. It's not going to be very easy when you're at school, you're managing a course load anywhere from four to six classes, you're trying to manage your schedule around golf and also around working out. And at the same time as well, you're also going to be in a different environment. You're going to be making a, a lot of new acquaintances, friends in school. You're going to have a lot of different things to do. 
And the reality is, is that you can't, as much as you want to, you're not going to be able to do everything. You're going to have to be able to prioritize and know when to say when in terms of managing your schedule. Um, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to have a lot of fun in school. But at the same time, if you don't learn how to manage your schedule properly, then it can be very overwhelming. And a lot of people that try to do everything, they eventually realize that they're going to fail in one area. And that area could be in your academics, and it could be in your golfing. Uh, one example I can give, and this sort of alludes to a, a point that Chris made out earlier, was about the fit in the school. So when I was a uh, when I was coaching, there was a student athlete who would come in who was a very highly regarded uh, golfer. He played in the U.S. Junior, played in the U.S. Amateur, even before he uh, came to came to Columbia. But the problem was is that he was not able to communicate properly with his parents and also to myself and also um, uh, Al Carlson, who was also the, the uh, athletic director who also managed the golf program, he wasn't able to communicate that he wanted to play golf professionally. And that's one of the things I try to talk about as a, um, as a golf coach for Columbia University was you need to, you know, when you're coming to a school like Columbia, you're probably not coming in to play professional golf. In fact, I discouraged, I've told, I've told a couple of student athletes that, look, I do not think that this is appropriate for you because you will not be fully committed or have the time to commit to becoming a professional golfer. It's very competitive. And so, regarding the student athlete, I mean, he was a great golfer, but he spent most of his time on the golf course. He went to practice every day, he went to practice on the weekends, he worked out, but he neglected his coursework. And so even though he had a good golf career his first couple of years where he won the Ivy League Championships and even qualified for the U.S. Open in Oakmont, he ended up actually failing um, a semester, being on academic, promote, uh, academic probation, and then actually ended up dropping out of Columbia altogether. And that makes me sad because you know, he really would have been better off going to a golf school, being with peers that want to be professional golfers. Now, I'm not trying to put any pressure on you to, you know, to, to say, okay, I need to know if I want to be a professional golfer, or if I need to know if I want to you know, be a, a, a banker, or if I want to be a doctor. It's not about that, but I think that you should have some sort of idea that depending on the school that you go to and choose, that there's going to have to be some sacrifices made based upon the environment that you're going to be going into. So during the process, talk to some of the student athletes there if you can. And during your recruiting trips, um, talk to the coach and see what the priority of the coach is. Because it's really important to know that if you don't want to play professional golf, it's okay. You know, it's okay to look for a program. There are coaches out there that, you know, as long as you're dedicated to becoming a good college golfer, they're okay with that. But then there's other coaches as well who will tell you flat out, hey, if you want to be pre-med and you want to bust your butt taking six classes, a lot of which will be very difficult, very competitive, then hey, I don't think so, that this will be a good fit because frankly what's going to happen later on is that you're not going to be happy there and something's going to give you're not going to have that balance of that student athlete experience, which I think is, is wonderful. From my personal um, aspect of the story, you know, I would say that uh, looking back at my four years at Columbia, um, I started off as a pre-med, and you know, looking back, um, you know, I do I ended up not going into medical school, and uh, I think I should have been better prepared for that because there was a lot of other things that I wanted to do, and because I wasn't given the right guidance, <coughs> I ended up uh, you know, just sort of going the pre-med route, taking all my classes that were required, which were, which were very difficult. And because of that, I had to sacrifice a lot of my social time. And I also was sick a lot, which also impacted my golf performance during, uh, during college. So I don't want to make it all sound uh, you know, negative. So the positive point, which I'll go into, is you know, what did I do after I graduated? Uh, graduated college and this is where I think this is the the positive part because these are some of the things that you'll have experienced and learned as a student athlete 
you know, all the sacrifices you'll have made, waking up early, going to the gym, you know, sacrificing a little bit of your, of your social life so that you can you know, be a better golfer on the course and a better student, is that there are several points that I'd like to make. So the first thing is um, you know, golf in and of itself is, um, you know, it's, 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 it's going to be very rewarding for you to, uh, to, 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 be a, uh, to, play college, to play college golf. Even today, um, 18 years after I graduated college, I still play competitively. I enjoy it quite a lot. It's also a good sort of outlet for me to uh, to make new acquaintances and also to stay competitive outside of my um, outside of my, my career. Um, the second thing as well is that that ability also to manage your time properly, knowing how to make decisions, how to sacrifice in one area to gain in another area is going to help you with pretty much every decision you're going to make later on in life. Uh, when you work, um, you're going to be having to make decisions on what projects you want to spend time on, where you allocate things, and then when a lot of you end up having families yourselves, this whole thing about responsibility, I'm sure your parents talk to you about responsibility a lot, well, it's going to help you become a better decision maker because you've gone through it alone during your college years. And it's going to give you a leg up, definitely, um, during the interview process when you can talk to your prospective employer about how you can juggle schedules, make decisions, and, 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 and at the same time, commit to these decisions and follow through. That's one of them. Another thing that you'll be able to do is a lot of people, between the sacrifices and also because you play competitive golf where you know about those bad breaks, the, the good drive you hit that you know might have had a bad bounce, or the good iron shot that you hit, or the lip outs, or the bad rounds, you're going to know how to handle adversity. Not just in terms of, 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 of when you apply for a job or when you apply for a promotion, but being able to, 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 to speak to that, that you have that ability to, to bounce back, but also just to be able to handle that in your, in your real lives. And, well, okay, maybe it's not the right word, real lives, but in your professional and family lives, you're going to see things that don't go your way. There are going to be decisions where you feel like they're not going to be fair, or you're going to get a bad break, or there's going to be something that happens. Uh, within my career, I've been fired. I've had decisions gone against me. I've had promotions I was passed up against. And the way that I reacted was not to, to, you know, to, to be angry about it, to, be, to, to make destructive decisions, or to say bad things because of it, but it's to accept them learn what had happened, understand the situation, and bounce back stronger. Um, my, my first job out of college, I ended up becoming a derivatives trader. Um, not sure why, it just seemed like the best thing to do at the time. But I ended up uh, trading derivatives, and I would say that actually having played golf was very important for me because there were days as a trader where I lost a lot of money, and how do I respond? There's a quote that, that, uh, that I can't remember who it's attributable to, but it's not necessarily about who you are or what you do that defines you. It's also about who you are and what you do through adversity. And I think that's very important because everyone's going to see some adversity in their lives. And, um, and I think that just having played, played competitive golf, I think that's going to help in terms of bouncing back and trying to be better. Look at Dustin Johnson. Um, and twice, um, he's had some you know, pretty bad luck in his, uh, in his quest for his first major championship. And what did the guy do? You know, in the middle of the first, in the middle of the final round at Oakmont, he, uh, you know, he, he came through, he won the US Open. And he bounced back and uh, you know, he showed the competitive grit. He showed that uh, he can rise above the adversity to become a champion. The other thing as well is, um, as a golfer also, and this is something I encourage strongly, is details. You're really paying attention to the, do, uh, the details, doing your homework, researching. It's, as a golfer, the rules of golf. Hopefully uh, everyone here is very comfortable knowing the rules of golf. Because I can tell you that no matter what you do, no matter what field you go into, that knowing the details, doing your homework, being prepared for, you know, for what you're getting into in, in college, 
in, in, your, in your working environment, you're knowing all the details are going to help you. Uh, when, you're, when you're going through the interview process, you know, when you're talking to a prospective employer, um, you, know, you, can, you can talk about how you, know, how you are very detail-oriented because um, you, know, you, you know about the rules of golf, you know all the nuances of the golf swing, that you can actually transition that into your working environment because the reality is, is that when you're within your job, your employer wants to know. You know they want to know, you know, that you that you that you really, you know, can can know you know, can know all the details of the work that you're going to be doing, because if that's the case, then you're going to do a good job within you know within what you do. Um, I would say that I'm fortunate in my in my career. I specialize in what's called exchange traded funds or ETFs. Um, I'm not sure if you know most of you know what those are, but but that's been most of my career. And when I was a trader, not only did I learn how to trade these products, but I tried to look for the little details into what made these products tick. You know, what were those little nuances? And when my trading career was over, I was fortunate because that, that knowledge of the details of exchange traded funds allowed me to go into asset management. Um, I made a transition about 10 years ago and uh, you know, just knowing these products well, better than anybody else, allowed me to get a good position working for Vanguard. And then now uh, I left Vanguard about a year ago, and I had uh, one of the, of the managers for the uh, ETF business at another, uh, another company called VanEck. And hopefully my attention to detail, the, 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 the desire to learn, you know, like on the golf course when when you're okay, I shot a good round, but you know I had a little bit of a, a couple of misses to the left. Uh, you know I was pulling my putts a little bit. Uh, you know I'm going to go and hit golf balls, and I'm going to try to hit some more putts to try to figure out what is that little key, what is that little detail. That kind of mentality is something that's going to help you later on as well. So getting a little sidetracked right now, but I'm going to try to sort of tie that in. You know what? You know, why? Why is playing? Competitive golf so important for that. Being a student athlete, it's because you're already developing a skill that you don't really fully, you know, fully, fully realize right now. But that ability to be curious, to to you know, want to know why, you know, why why your round was not good today. Why, you know, how can you hit the ball 20 yards further? How do I learn how to hit a fade when you know my primary shot's a draw? How do I, you know, how do I make more five footers under pressure? All those little things are going to serve you very well, and I encourage you to keep, keep that, you know, that thirst for knowledge, for that, you know, just to try to figure out, just keep attention, pay attention to those little details, because later on, when you go into the working world, when you go into taking on more responsibilities as an adult, that. Though that, that, that attention to detail, that time management, all that stuff that you're going to have, you're going to probably thank yourself for having, you know, having, having done all that. And uh, the road along the way is going to have some ups and downs. You're going to be frustrated at times. But I think that the reward later on, when, when, you, when, you, when you feel like you know, you've, you've grasped things, when you've overcome challenges, when you've gotten promoted, when, you know, when you've really had success in your life, you're, I think you're going to thank yourself for, 